What up, YouTubers? This is your boy, Big Metroid Fan 12, coming to you with another video game review. And this time I'm reviewing Bram Stoker's Dracula. It was released on the NES, Game Boy, Game Gear, MS DOS, by Pro Software, and it was also released on the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, and the Amiga by Psygnosis. The Traveler's Tales. Now, all the games are um, are based on the um, 1992 Bram Stoker's Dracula movie and the novel that came out in the 1800s, I believe. I think the major difference in the games, at least, are the fact that the majority of them are platformers, with the exception, I think, the Sega CD version and the Amiga version. And, um, and the plot of, um, in each version is practically, it's from the movie and, and the novel, where the, um, the main protagonist of the game, uh, Jonathan uh, Harvard, is is trying to take out the take out Dracula, and he happened to be one of the uh, characters in in the novel and the movie. So if you want to um, um, want to know the plot of the movie and the um, novel, all you have to do is just Google Bram Stoker Dracula. And the move, the movie and the uh, novel will show up. Now, the number of stages in each version of Bram Stoker Dracula do vary, but with the NES version, it has seven stages in it. And it see like all the stages are pretty much look the same to me. You know what I'm saying? In terms of, of Prior to like the design and everything, and throughout the course of the game, you do fight different en enemies like skeletons, zombies, snakes, bats, and hands. And it's somewhat similar to the Castlevania franchise in terms of the types of enemies you fight. You just that you won't um, take on like say um, Frankenstein. The mummies, whatever the case may be, so those type of uh, creatures won't um, make their way into the um, into this game because of the fact that let's face it, it's based off of Bram Stoker's novel, and you do um, have different type of weapons that you can uh, um, that you use like a slash, rock, fire, triple rock. And, and, and in retrospect, those weapons are kind of pathetic, you know what I'm saying? They they couldn't use better, they couldn't use, like, better weapons for, um, the, this protagonist to use. To me, they should have had weapons that's not taken from the Castlevania series, but, um, there's something that's a little, like, more stronger than the weapons that's used in this game. And there's different types of items that you can use throughout the course of the game, like coins, diamonds, clocks, shield, one-ups, hearts, that, three types of hearts that replenish your health and everything. And the items that you get are, are pretty decent. I, I'm not going to lie about that. They are pretty decent. And it, um... And all the and all seven stages in the NES version has two um six different divided in its two sections, uh, daytime and nighttime, and it seemed like you know, you know, it, it looks the same to me based on the level that sounds like like I mentioned earlier, and then there's yeah, different forms of Dracula that you will fight like uh, Shadow Dracula, Young Dracula, Werewolf Dracula. The bat version of Dracula and um, Dracula's evil world form, and it and it just really occurred to me it's practically no different than fighting Freddy in the uh, Friday the Thirteenth 
game for the NES where he, there's different forms of Freddy in that game, you know. And what seemed odd to me, though, is the fact that um, in the NES version, Dracula has a were the were it has the werewolf form, and it is pretty odd because for us, because as far as I know, there isn't any um, Dracula movie that he turns into a werewolf, and if um if if that's the case, because well, you can mention it in the comic section, but the fact that it remains, I'm not aware of any movies or novels since Bram Stoker Dracula was released that Dracula himself changes it into a, um, into a werewolf. And it's pretty much odd to me from our overall standpoint because of that, because of what I know. Not necessarily what I know, but what I watch in movies. <laughs> And stuff, even though I, I haven't watched like every single vampire or slash Dracula movie. Now the graphics and level designs are for the most are for for uh, overall standpoint just mediocre and outright plain, you know what I'm saying? And it's mainly lies at the fault of how the level de levels are designed and fact that the color the color palette is pretty bland even though the it's supposed to come off as um come off as dark like the movie and the novel just but it didn't it wasn't executed very well and the gameplay is uh pretty decent as far as the jumping and it does have a, a good amount of weapons, but like, like I said earlier, just, they're kind of pathetic, a couple of them are short range, they wish the, the two weapons there are short range, should have had, should have been a longer range, you know, and to me, the worst part of the game is the soundtrack for the NES version, because it's a little, it is like a scrambled mess, you know what I'm saying? It should. I can say that it, it would be safe to say rather that um, the other versions of Bram Stoker's Dracula, whether you're talking about the Genesis version, second CD version, they're bad too, you know what I'm saying? I just wish that uh, Sony would have at least for the NES version, should have took the, um, took the soundtrack of a movie and just, just put it in the game to make it, like, sound good and, and match the dark tone of the, of the movie, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and, and as far as that, um, the werewolf form of Dracula, they should have this, outright scratched that form and hey, it should have replaced it with a form of Dracula that's more consistent with Bram Stoker's Dracula and the movies and novels that were released since then because like I said this Dracula would have would not change it to a werewolf but the only way that would happen is there was a movie that was a um that's a, practically a Dracula that's a parody of Dracula, you know what I'm saying? So unless you know, yeah, like I said, like a unless a movie about Dracula is an outright parody of of Dracula, it really don't make no sense for him to um change it to a werewolf in a game much less of a serious horror flick about Dracula, you know what I'm saying? But from an overall standpoint, Bram Stoker's Dracula as a video game is just a mediocre title regardless if you're talking about the NES version or the Amiga version or the MS DOS version of it. It's just just mediocre and bland. Now, I would only recommend this to gamers who have a YouTube channel that where they do pretty much less plays or 
they're trying to collect all of the um, games that were released on the different um, on the on the different consoles, like all the Super Nintendo games, or all the Genesis games, or all the Sega CD games. But other than that, I would say just just give this game from an overall standpoint. You know what I'm saying? As far as the score, I would definitely give this game five out of ten. Now, I'm just mainly talk about the uh, NES version of Bram Stoker's Dracula, giving that a five out of ten. Some might, I might see, I might give it a four or three if, if I happen to um, play 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 Bram Stoker's Dracula on. Genesis or Super Nintendo or something, but this is my score for the NES version. Now, with that being said, if you play Bram Stoker's Dracula, regardless if it's on Mega or, or Super Nintendo or even the NES version, you can mention it in the comment section. If you like my review with Bram Stoker's Dracula, don't hesitate to click the thumbs up button and. If you want to share it, that's fine too. And don't forget to subscribe. This is your boy, Big Metroid Fan 12, signing off.